I've always loved vintage SUVs. Mid-90s Defenders, 80s Woody Wagoneers, they are all awesome in my book. And something that's interested me for many years now has been the rise of value in those vehicles. Those two examples in very good restored condition can range anywhere from thirty to eighty thousand dollars. But this, a 1969 Ford Bronco, fully restored and in excellent condition, just sold for twenty to five. Why is that? So what's up everybody, my name is Alex and in today's video I'm super excited to show you this, a 1969 Ford Bronco that a good friend of mine just bought two months ago. In this video we're going to go over all of its unique modifications and I'm going to show you the condition of this Bronco. We're even going to lift it up in the air so you can see what $22,000 really gets you in the first generation Bronco market. Of course I'm going to take it out on the road for a test drive and show you all how something like this drives on a normal everyday basis and then we're going to talk about something that's very important and that's how if you're on the fence about buying a first generation Bronco, how you need to get off of that fence like right now and go buy one of these because they are skyrocketing in price. Oh and of course we're going to talk about the Tweety Bird theme because the previous owner of this truck loved the Looney Tunes apparently. Let me show you some of the features of this vehicle or really lack thereof. If you've ever been in anything of this era, you know that it didn't come with much, especially a truck that was meant to be an off-roading vehicle. Now, this owner has eliminated even some of the most basic features of this car. As you can tell on the door panel right here, this is where the crank used to be for the window. And there is no window at all. There's no glass. It's been molded over and there's nothing there. This is just how it is at all times. This has basically been turned into kind of like a beach cruiser. So although the owner does have a top for it, he's never going to use it. It's completely pointless. So if you get stuck in the rain, kind of like how I am right now, you're pretty much screwed. This is how it is. From the factory, you got your very basic features. You obviously have your heat. There's no air conditioning at all in this. You have your wipers, your lights, your lighter, of course. And there's only one, which is kind of weird because a lot of old cars have like eight. So only one lighter. And then on the other side is the choke that you pull, which still totally works and is completely factory. And honestly, that's about all you got. Manual steering, manual brakes. Uh, this was as bare bones as possible, and honestly, rightfully so for an off-roading vehicle like this one. We gotta talk about the Tweety Bird theme. Now, my buddy who bought this actually thought this truck was such a good deal because of all the Tweety Bird Looney Tunes stuff that's going on here. Um, but honestly, they're all stickers, they're all decals. They can totally be removed, but it's kind of funny. It goes along with this yellow paint scheme, and honestly, I love it. I wouldn't change it. I think it's really cool. And even the floor mats, Looney Tunes there. And we have, of course, the big Tweety Bird on the back. And you want to see something really cool in case you're underneath the vehicle and you've forgotten what the theme is. Yep, we got the Tweety Bird right on the differential. Let's take a look at the body of the Bronco because it is absolutely amazing and they did a great job on the paint. Look at this, straight as an arrow. 22.5, this truck was completely restored, although I think a lot of this metal uh, is original, or at least they just did a really nice job with everything, but the paint is great. I don't really see any runs. Um, it looks fantastic. I mean, this thing looks like a million bucks in person, and I'm sure on video as well. They did an excellent job here. Uh, as you can see, there are no door handles, so you do have to go inside and open it like that. But then again, it's got no windows either, so whatever. They didn't go too nuts with like a crazy lift kit with huge mudding tires. Uh, just a really nice classical look. And then one other thing, they did chop this windshield down. Uh, the owner told me that this has uh, been chopped a couple inches, maybe two, three inches. Uh, so it gives it kind of a sleeker look to it. I've strapped a GoPro on my head to show you a couple things before we take off on the test drive. This is not an automatic shifter, although it looks just like one. This is just a switch from four wheel to two wheel drive. What this Bronco has is a three speed column shifter, also known as a three on the tree or some in Chicago say a tree on the tree. Let me show you how this works before we take off. The clutch and all the footwork is exactly the same. So you push the clutch in, this is neutral right in the middle. And then to go to first gear, you pull in towards you and straight down. To go to reverse, let's say this is neutral, you go in and straight up. Okay, so let's say we're driving along, push the clutch in, go into first, then second you go back into like a neutral position and then straight up. And then third gear is just straight down from here. 
So the first time I drove this, I was a little freaked out that when I went into second, I was gonna accidentally go into reverse, but you get the hang of it like right away. It's super easy and I actually really like this. I think I would prefer this over an automatic if there was an automatic Bronco, but they didn't make them until 1973. So this is all you got in the 69. All right, driving in the Bronco and it feels good. Now, I have to let you know, today is a new day because this happened yesterday. This is what happens when you get caught in the rain, when you don't have a top. You get completely soaked and all your camera equipment gets wet and your friend's awesome Bronco gets a bath. Yeah, completely soaked. And then it stopped raining like an hour later, so go figure. Today's a new day and we're out driving the Bronco. Sorry if it's a little bit loud, but it's a convertible. And I have to start off with driving impressions with the manual transmission. I showed you how it worked. And honestly, I do really, really like it. It's really nice. My only downside to it that I can think of is the clutch, it engages right at the very top. It's very hard. I mean, your leg is definitely getting a workout driving this thing around but whatever, I still really like it. And I think personally, I'd rather have it more than the automatic, although my wife might disagree with that. So the Bronco has no power steering, like I said. So maneuvering around town is a little bit difficult. I just pulled off onto a side street and I'm gonna try and turn around here in this alley. So let's see. Okay, so as long as you're going really any speed, it's totally fine. Straight up reverse. Okay, but here we go. So I'm, I'm stopped right now and this is where it gets difficult. Yesterday in the rain though, it was easy at any speed. But yeah, so this is a little little bit tough, but honestly, nothing too crazy. But really, I mean, you could upgrade to power steering for uh, not that much money, so why not? It's a no-brainer. I would definitely do it, and this owner actually is going to do it. The brakes on this car are awesome. Now, from the factory, they are not awesome at all. They're four-wheel drum, and I don't even think that they're power-assisted back in 1969, but this owner put a really nice Wildwood disc brake conversion all the way around, power disc brakes, it's got like six piston calipers in the front and four in the rear. It's unbelievable. They just work great, so no complaints at all in the braking department. One thing that really surprised me about the Bronco is just how comfortable it is sitting here. Now, there's just no bad way to sit in this Bronco. It's so nice, the steering wheel's huge, the seat's comfortable. My favorite part, though, is that since they molded over the door panel and there's no glass, you have this massive armrest for your left arm. You just have to watch out if you wear a ring like I do that you don't scratch the paint, but other than that, it's perfect. I could cruise around in this all day long, and honestly, I think I might just do that. The Bronco has the 302 V8. I think they said like 205 horsepower. So what I want to know is, can you cruise this thing at a decent highway speed? How does it feel? I know it'll have the power, obviously, to get there. As honestly, it's actually pretty quick right now. So we're in third gear. We're at 50 right now. Let's see if we can hit 70 miles an hour, although I don't think the speedo is very accurate. There we go. All right. That is 70 miles an hour according to the Bronco. And this is definitely highway speed. I think it's a little bit slower than 70 though. And you can cruise this thing. I don't know if I drive it to California, but a couple hour road trip, no problem. I know I've made the Bronco out to be like very bare bones and it definitely is. This was meant to be an off-roading vehicle. But there are some really cool factory options that were available on some of the first gen Broncos that I gotta tell you about. On these Broncos, you could get a dual fuel tank, a power takeoff unit, you could get a factory winch, a snow plow, and my favorite is a post hole digger. Now, I'll admit, I couldn't find any pictures of the post hole digger online, so maybe it doesn't exist, and maybe it's true that you can't believe everything on the internet, but if any of you have any links or pictures to a factory Bronco with a post hole digger, please link them down below. I'd love to see them. And one more thing before we head back to the garage to get this thing up in the air and see if my friend got ripped off. Maybe 22.5 was too much. Maybe this thing is totally rotted underneath. We're gonna find out. I just wanted to tell you that this thing is an insane attention getter. I used to drive a yellow big block 1968 Camaro around. I had it for two years and I drove it all the time. That doesn't even come close to the attention I get in this. Now I know this is a yellow Bronco and it's got Tootie Bird all over it. 
But seriously, when I was filming at the Forest Preserve, I had to leave. There were at least five people that came up to me taking pictures. The police came. They just wanted to see it. It was unbelievable. So if you want a ton of attention, get a Bronco in yellow and put some kind of Looney Tunes character on it. That'll do the trick. Here we are under the hood of the Bronco. This is supposedly the original 302 engine, but I'm sure it's been rebuilt once or twice. It has aftermarket valve covers. Um, who knows what else is done in there. It sounds fairly stock, um, but I just wanted to show you the general condition uh, underneath the hood. Everything lines up really nice. This restoration so far looks to be in really good condition. The hood opens and shuts perfectly. Body lines are very nice for a 69 Bronco. They're not perfect. Um, the inside of the hood looks really nice. Check out this Wildwood disc brake conversion master cylinder and brake booster. Looks so nice. They have these things fitting in there like stock now. So anyway, this is under the hood. It looks great so far. So let's get this thing up in the air and see the true condition of the 69 Bronco. We are under underneath the Bronco and I wanted to show you this because anything can look pretty on the outside but it's what's underneath that matters. Now on this truck most all of the mechanical has likely been replaced and has very very low miles at this point. These are the brand new Wildwood disc brake conversion. Awesome awesome setup. They work so well. But let's take a look at stuff that's very important when you're looking at an older vintage vehicle which is the frame. Is there any rot? How are the floors? What's the level of rust? Those are the things you really need to look out for. And I'm happy to report that this truck is in great shape. Now this isn't a concourse level restoration. This is a more more than a nice driver. Uh, the frame is in excellent condition, no rot, no real rust to speak of. And what's really nice is they haven't just simply caked the underbody of this truck with a bunch of undercoating. You see that a lot with older vehicles and usually it means that uh, there's been a lot of work done or it's not in really all that good of condition. Um, this one has been painted a little bit but undercoating very light and you can kind of just see the true Bronco under here. It's, it's really nice. The metal uh, is in excellent condition. There's really no real rust to speak of. I mean, maybe a little bit of surface rust, but like I said, this is more than a nice driver. This isn't concourse level. This isn't a Barrett Jackson $150,000 car. This was 22 grand. And this is, this is definitely, definitely more than I would have expected. And just in case you forgot the theme, here is your Tweety. And that's this Ford Bronco. You've seen me get caught in the rain. You've seen me go 70 miles an hour on some Chicago back road. We've lifted the Bronco up in the air to check out its condition, and we've checked out all of its cool modifications. So now it's time to talk about why all of you out there who are in the market for a Bronco should strike sooner than later. Also, why was this one a little bit cheaper than normal? And generally, what is going on with the value of the Bronco? Well, it's all pretty simple. And I found a very nice article that I will link down below from Bloomberg, where they interviewed a spokesperson from Haggerty who is discussing the value of these trucks selling at the Barrett Jackson auction. In the article, he said that five years ago, a decent condition driver Bronco would sell for about $14,500. Today, it's about $29,000. Now, five years ago, a pristine Bronco in excellent condition was selling for about $23,000, and today it's $47,000. So essentially, they've doubled in five years, and we're not talking about recession time. This is 2012 to 2017. So why is that? According to the article, it's pretty simple. It's millennials. Millennials have been jacking up the prices on all of these vintage SUVs, and it's just taking them a little bit longer to figure out that they really like the old Broncos. Another reason is these are very inexpensive to repair. You can buy basically everything you need from the Bronco at Napa or AutoZone or Pep Boys or any store, and anyone can really fix them. Try saying that about a 90s Land Rover. It's not happening. How is it if an excellent condition first generation Bronco sells for 47,000 that this one only sold for 22.5? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, this car was sold on consignment at a little dealership in Detroit, and I think the previous owner just wanted to move on the Bronco and he gave my friend a better deal on the truck. I think this is probably more of a mid to upper $20,000 Bronco. Second and most important reason is that it has modifications. We all know modifications devalue classical and antique cars, and this one has the shaved door handles, the lowered windshield, and also it's got no window. It's kind of capped off on the door there. So all that stuff devalues the Bronco a little bit. But in my opinion, I would much rather have a Bronco like this for 22.5 that I don't feel bad about driving 
than something pristine that's all original for $50,000. But that's just me, I like to use my cars. And that brings me to my last point. Why should one of you buy one of these first generation Broncos now as opposed to waiting? Well, there's a few reasons. Number one, in 2020, a new Bronco is coming out. So just generally speaking, the Ford Bronco is gonna be more in the automotive news. Number two, these haven't shown any signs of slowing down since that article was released in January. I've looked at some of these online and they're well past $50,000 at this point. So barring any kind of crazy recession or war or something like that, these should continue to go up just like the Defender did, just like the Wagoneers did. These are just a little bit late to the party. So if you're in the market, think about buying one now as opposed to later. And that'll do it for today's video on this 1969 Ford Bronco. I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you're new and checking in for the first time, please consider subscribing. I'd absolutely love to have you. And to all my current subscribers, thank you so much for watching the videos. I really appreciate it. And to everybody out there, have a great day and I will see you in the next video.